Welcome to ReFilm, a man named Dalton Russell, introduces himself while sitting in a dark room, which he claims to be a prison cell, and reveals he has executed a perfect robbery. The Manhattan Trust Bank in New York, is raided by a group of robbers, dressed in painter's coveralls. As they take people hostage, a police officer spots unusual activity at the bank, and informs the force about the ongoing robbery. Detective Keith Frazier and Detective Mithsel are informed about the robbery, and are asked to lead the negotiations with the robbers. They arrive at the crime scene, where the police are organizing their setup, and are briefed about the latest updates. Inside the bank, robbers order the hostages to gather in the main hall, where they collect their keys and cell phones. One of the bank employees tries to hide his phone, implying that he left it at the house, but their leader finds it in his office room, and beats him in front of everyone, to send the message that everyone needs to comply with their orders. The hostages are then forced to change into coveralls and masks, just like the robbers. Meanwhile, they spot an old sick man, and send him outside the bank, with a note warning the police to stay away. Arthur Case, the chairman of the board of directors of the bank, calls a fixer Madeline White, and requests her help in the ongoing robbery at his bank. He tells her about a safety deposit box in the bank, and asks her to protect it at any cost, but does not reveal anything about the contents of the box. The police continue the investigation, and try to call the robbers, but no one answers the phone, nor do they find anything useful from the security footage, as the robbers already turned off the cameras. After some time, the robbers send another hostage outside, with a briefcase that contains another note, asking the police to arrange two buses and a jet for them by 9 p.m., otherwise the hostages will face the consequences. As the police discuss the situation, Arthur visits them, and offers his help to meet the robbers' demands, but Keith refuses the offer and asks him to leave. Soon, the police receive another message from the robbers, in which they ask them to arrange food for the hostages. The police send in a recording device within the pizza boxes, and the bug soon captures a conversation, but it's in a foreign language. The police ask the citizens for their help to identify the language, which turns out to be Albanian. Keith calls in a woman to translate the conversation, but she reveals it's just a recording from one of the speeches of a former Albanian president. After listening to her, Keith realizes the robbers are trying to keep them engaged, to get more time, but he still cannot figure out their plan. Meanwhile, Dalton Russell opens the safety deposit box 392, and confiscates its contents. Madeline arrives outside the bank, and is introduced to Keith, who is asked to include her in the investigations. Keith once again calls inside the bank, and talks to Russell, while threatening that he will be in prison within no time, but Russell confidently replies that he will walk out through the front door, and he won't be able to do anything. As time goes by, the robbers divide the hostages among different rooms, and keep on shuffling them, while incorporating their team members among them. They also continue to work on their secret plan, and keep digging the floor inside the supply room of the bank. At Madeline's request, Keith allows her to talk to the robbers, and she offers Russell a safe way out, if he protects her interests. After listening to her, Russell invites her inside the bank, where she offers him $2 million if he protects the contents of the box, but he rejects the offer. Upon Russell's question about the contents, she denies knowing anything about it, but he reveals that he is aware of what's inside the box. He tells her, the box belongs to someone who worked for a bank in Switzerland during World War II, and took advantage of the situation to make a lot of money, which he later used in establishing this bank. Madeline realizes he knows about Arthur's past, and requests him to take her to the safety deposit room. In the box, they discover an envelope containing documents from Nazi Germany, and Russell says Arthur should have destroyed these documents a long time ago. She once again offers him help in return for a safe way out, but he does not seem interested at all. She comes outside the bank, where Keith asks her about her conversation with the robbers, but she ignores his question, saying she is not allowed to share any details with him. As the team discuss the robber's potential plan, Keith suspects they are only distracting them to buy more time. He decides to be a step ahead, and calls Russell to inform he has arranged a plane as per his demand, but he won't hand it over, until he makes sure the hostages are safe. In response, Russell invites him inside the bank, where he shows him around and lets him meet the hostages. He takes him to a different room, where Keith assures the hostages that he will be taking them out soon. Keith talks to Russell, and offers two options, either he will arrest him after the robbery, or he can walk out with him and end the robbery now, but he rejects both options. While talking to him, Keith also reveals knowing that they never wanted a plane, and were just trying to keep them busy. Russell also asks about his personal life, to which Keith says he wants to get married, but does not have enough financial resources to do so. Before leaving, he tricks Russell into a fight, and tries to remove his mask, 
but his friends rescue him. After leaving the bank, Keith tells Mitchell that he intentionally started the fight, just to find out about the robber's mindset, and has discovered that they won't hurt anyone. Soon, he is proved wrong, as Russell calls him, and asks to point the cameras to the second floor, where they execute one of the hostages in front of them. Keith gets frustrated, and rushes to the bank, where Russell tells him he is responsible for the killing, and that he will kill others too if he does not fulfill their demands. Keith's superior arrives, after finding out the news about the hostage's murder, and scolds him for being irresponsible. He forces him to stay off the case, while he plans the next move with the rest of the team. The police decide to raid the bank, and use rubber bullets to take everyone down, until they identify the robbers. Meanwhile, Keith suspects the robbers cannot just sit there in the dark, and they must have some way to anticipate the police's next move. He comes back to the van, and searches the briefcase they sent earlier, finding out that they planted a listening device, and were aware of their every move. He orders the team to abandon the plan, but they still decide to go forward. The robbers who have heard about the raid, use smoke grenades, and come out of the bank with the hostages. The police surround them, and Keith orders to interrogate each one of them, as some of them may be the robbers. As hostages are taken away, the police go inside the bank, and start searching around to find out about the loss. They look around the supply room, but get surprised to see that the robbers did not even touch the money. Keith recovers the hostages' cell phones, but gets confused as he cannot understand the purpose of the robbery, if they did not steal anything from the bank. The team also finds out about artificial guns and props, realizing they had no plan to harm anyone, and fake the execution just to threaten them. Upon Keith's orders, the police investigate each of the hostages, but are unable to suspect any of them to be the robbers. Keith meets his senior, and informs him about the details, saying none of the hostages were found to be involved, as they have witnessed each other. As they cannot find any clue, nor is there any proof of the robbery, he is asked to close the case due to the lack of evidence. Keith agrees, but continues his search for the truth. He studies bank records, and finds out the safety deposit box number 392 is not mentioned anywhere, so he asks Michelle to assist him in running a background check. He also meets Madeline, and confronts her about the case. He pulls out an incriminating recording that he made earlier, when Madeline was introduced to him, and he was threatened to cooperate with her. After listening to it, she tells him about Arthur's dealings with the Nazis, but asks him to keep it confidential, if he doesn't want to lose his job. Madeline later meets Arthur, and tells Keith is not ready to give up on the case. Arthur asks her about the envelope, but she tells her the gang leader has it, as he might be planning to use it against him in the future. While talking to him, she says the robbers did not take any money from the bank, but she is sure they were after the contents of the box, which she suspects must be more valuable. After some confrontation, Arthur admits the box contained loose diamonds, and a ring that belonged to the wife of his Jewish friend, whom he betrayed to the Nazis, because they paid him a lot of cash. She learns about his crimes, but is asked to keep it a secret as part of her deal, and she agrees to it. Russell resumes his monologue, in which he claims to be in a cell, but he is actually revealed to be behind an artificial wall, in the supply room of the bank, that his teammates built during the robbery. He pulls out the diamonds he stole from the box, and comes out of the secret space a week after the robbery. Russell's team, who is revealed to be among the hostages, but the police could not identify them, waits for him outside the bank to pick him up. They spot Keith and Mitchell going inside the bank, and inform Russell about them, but he assures them he will make it out safely. With his changed getup, he walks out of the door and bumps into Keith, who is just entering the bank, but he cannot recognize him. Russell rejoins his team, who warmly welcome him, and celebrate their victory. Meanwhile, Keith, who has got the search warrants, asks the officials to take him to the safety deposit box number 392. He finds a diamond ring inside the box, with a note, that says follow the ring. Keith and Mitchell visit Arthur, and investigate him about the ring, but he does not reveal anything. Keith later meets Madeline, and persuades her to report Arthur to the war crimes office. At home, Keith finds a diamond inside his pocket, realizing Russell put it there for him, when he bumped into him at the entrance. He also remembers him saying, that he will walk out of the front door in front of them, and smiles in admiration.